Junior. Come here, buddy. Come here, Junior. Come here, boy. How you doing, Henry? Uh, hey, Henry. Hi, Dozer. Right. I'm Joe Henderson. I live in Salt, Alaska, and uh, getting ready to go up to the Arctic for about 80 days solo. So just me and uh, me and my 22 dogs. Come on, good boy. It's pretty brutal. No one ever travels in the winter time, but that's where we're headed, and uh, we're gonna go do some more uncharted territory and uh, get some good measurements for the USGS and see what they can do with it. My name is Frank Urban. I, uh, I work with the United States Geological Survey. Joe has the unique opportunity to help in the sense that he is able to go much further distances and reach locations that we can't necessarily reach because he is completely self-sufficient. We are pinned down in another blizzard. It's the whole name of the game here. You better be loaded with supplies because you don't know how long these blizzards are gonna last. He's out for multiple weeks, months at a time, completely powered by dogs. Basking in the sun and his unique ability to be an Arctic survivor. Yeah, I'm probably the last of the uh, old time Arctic explorers. You know, it, it's interesting. I do all the old methods. I do the way I do it, travel as far as I do with amount of time that I travel, I spend up to four months without resupply. I can't even count the number of times I've been nearly killed or starved to death. I mean, I've gone three days up there without eating a single piece of food. You gotta be a endurance athlete. And you gotta be able to embrace the suffering. When Joe's out there in the Arctic in all his gear and his skin stuff, I mean, he just looks like he's part of the landscape. This is in his zone. My name is Janice Koval. I live here in Salcha, Alaska, and I've been married to Joe for three years. So Joe's been in the Arctic so much and has learned so many things about clothing, gear, sleds, how to steer a sled, different systems that he's really on top of his game right now. You know, many, many years of traveling, trial and error, figuring things out, fixing things, just a lot of ingenuity that he's used. And he's totally inspiring. You got your caribou. And that's what you sleep on. A lot of prep. I mean, you gotta build the sleds, you gotta repair them. And you just gotta invent stuff, you gotta innovate. I mean, that's what you gotta do. I mean, otherwise you'd never survive. So this is the tent I designed years ago. This, this tent here has probably over a thousand nights, a thousand nights in it. In the back here, I was working with trying to design. I got tired of it being so dark in the tent. So I said, well, I'm gonna experiment with a window. And so I bought some of the turtle and I said, I'll see how long it lasts. And I did that 10 years ago. And that window's still there, I can't believe it. I set the stove up, put that pipe through there, fire it up. So the next 10 days, I have to train the dog. It's all psychological training, basically. I mean, the, the guys are all muscled up. They're ready to go. They're in shape. But since these conditions are totally different from any other in the state of Alaska, we have to condition our minds to know deep down for certain that they will never ever get tired out. And so that way they won't conserve energy. If they do get tired, the next time you run them, they're gonna conserve energy and you're not gonna go anywhere because we're gonna be running in the snow that's three, four, five feet deep. And 
they have to go all out, 100%. All right, so dogs are howling. They, they heard me pick up the harnesses and set them down. You know, dogs have really good hearing. And uh, <laughs> they want to go. <laughs> My Alaskan Malamutes is a breed, an ancient breed. So we're kind of carrying on their legacy of Arctic exploration. You know, as soon as we get up there, oh, I mean, they just go crazy. They recognize, you know, the treeless landscape. It's, it's just amazing to see. You know, their DNA goes back so many thousands of years. It's got to have some kind of effect when they see the open country. It's like, oh, man, we're home. <laughs> It's pretty cool. I feel the same way. I mean, they're amped. They've been watching me load the truck. They've been watching the trailer. They hear the harnesses. I mean, they're like the firecrackers are going to cut loose. So, well, we'll see what happens. OK. So this is the reason I do a trial run, is find out who to match up. You know, Dalton's a, like to be a leader, and he's a little bit older than Henry, yet he's intimidated by Henry. And Henry doesn't know what's going on. I mean, he's just trying to have some fun. So a lot of times if the dog gets intimidated to the next, by the next dog beside him, they won't pull very hard. First few days is doing this, it's getting the right combination. And once you got the right combination, then you're good to go. It's just like opening, picking a lock, combination lock. Once you get the right combination, you're good. But it takes a lot of this stuff to figure out the formula. But they're doing good now, so now I'll remember that these two will be my leaders. Dalton is definitely out of the lead category. <laughs> Come on. Okay. You know, I hear a lot of people say they conquer the Arctic. You gotta obey the Arctic. You can't conquer it. Nature has a way to humble you. And there's no mercy, no forgiveness. Once you freeze, you're dead. It's all about being humble. And every year, people say, when are you going to retire? When are you going to retire? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not going to happen. It's just what I was born to do, you know? It's just everything in my life from the time I was a kid till now, it just seems like it led to this. As long as I still can strap the snowshoes on and ski and, and run and trot and handle those dogs, you know? I'll be going up there. And, you know, I might be 90 years old when I decide to hang up the snowshoe. <laughs> Even then, I doubt it. I'll just go to my drop. 